way to the webinar talk show. I'm Liz Green. Hey there, and my name is Tom Singer, and Eliz and I have put together the webinar talk show as a way to showcase the fact that webinars don't have to be long and boring, and they can be better than a talking head over PowerPoint. One of the reasons that we decided to do this show was really to demonstrate what we can do, but also be of service to the meetings industry. And there are a lot of people who are struggling with some very hard decisions about what to do with live events, what to do with membership, how to support their membership, both on the meeting professional side and the association executive side. That's why we are so excited. I, I don't know if you notice, both Tom and I are wearing our association pins this morning. Um, they happen to be 10 year membership pins. So Tom and I are, um, I think big fans is probably not even the right words. I, I think if fans? you cut me, I, I bleed in SA blue. <laughs> That's true, all right, absolutely true. And our CEO, of the National Speakers Association, Mary Lou Peck, is here to join us to talk about some of those hard decisions and what NSA is doing to support their membership. Welcome to the webinar talk show, Mary Lou Peck. Welcome, Mary Lou. There she is. Yay. Thank you guys for having me. So you come from a background of event professional, also association exec, turning around associations who may have been running at a deficit. Coming into this, I know you have been such a blessing to our association and we've moved and grown, but all of a sudden, here comes COVID-19 and things changed for all of us as professional speakers, like <laughs> it was all gone. <laughs> that, that great sucking sound of my calendar clearing was heard around oh, the world. Oh, whoo. Uh, it still kind of gives me a little like indigestion just to think about that period of time. The association's reaction to that was outstanding. From a member standpoint, there was information that I could use right away. And I don't even, how did you even come up with the idea for that first webinar? Yeah, that was like a week into events being canceled. And all of a sudden, NSA put on a webinar that had you know several experienced people who'd been through downturns before, but the information was fantastic and right. real. Yeah, so we're super, super fortunate at NSA that we have a very active and engaged membership base. <laughs> so anytime there's anything we need, I can reach out to members, people like yourselves, Mm -hmm. And um, they say yes before I even finish asking for what <laughs> I need. Um, so we are more fortunate in a lot of associations in the fact that we do have that engaged membership base. Um, obviously, COVID had a drastic impact on our members, professional speakers. Mm -hmm. And there's all these reports on the meeting industries, but speakers often get lost. I look at them like they're, they're the last supplier in the supply chain, right? Which means they're the very first to be affected. So our speakers were building out their business without warning, without a lot of foresight or knowledge, like all of a sudden their revenue just stopped. It didn't like drizzle down, it stopped. Nope. <laughs> so um, we knew like just taking that into consideration, uh, we knew our members need to understand how do you financially prepare? What are some things you can do now? How do you pivot your business? And we looked at our membership base um, and we had people like Barry Banther, who mm -hmm. has turned around associations. He's led turnarounds and he's led boards that have done turnarounds. Um, so he was able to provide a lot of information on financials, on liquidity, on things you can, actions you can start taking now. And then we had the amazing Randy Gage and Jay Bear, um, who know how to switch to more digital, um, how to market, how to product, uh, um, package your products. And then our president, Anna Liotta, uh, who had done a couple of interviews with some meeting event uh, professionals to talk about like what maybe this would look like. So we got all of them. And again, as soon as I asked them, it was, yes, absolutely, I'm there. Two days later, we were doing the, the webinar and now we've put together a series. And then we've also added the Fresh Talk Fridays because with our members, you know, 
professional speaking is a very lonely business. And a lot yes. Of people don't realize that. You guys do. You're on the road a lot. You're disconnected from your family. You don't work in an office with large teams. So we realize part of dealing with COVID and what's going on, there's a big emotional component mm -hmm. of that too and a feeling of being disconnected. So community is really important. So that's what Fresh Talk Fridays is about. So we've got one member for each Fresh Talk Friday that is just facilitating a conversation. Nice. Uh, and then we have our, obviously, like, like most associations, a resource page where we put some links to some SBA stuff, past recordings, um, and things like that. And then last week, you guys held a town hall mm -hmm. where you sort of updated the membership about sort of the state of the industry and the state of the association and what was going to go on with our big conference, because mm -hmm. like all right. associations, you know, the conference is often that, that centerpiece of the year. And our conference is scheduled for August. And, and you did a really good job of updating everybody as far as the changes that our association was going to make to, you know, not only try to move forward with the mm -hmm. conference, but also to make sure that we were providing uh, the proper amount of education and learning for the people who, who would be participating, whether it goes live or not. So how did the town hall come about? So um, we do town hall six weeks, within six weeks from every uh, board meeting, because again, we do have a very active, engaged membership. Um, it was clear that our members needed to hear from us, and we have a wonderful board of directors. We have an excellent finance committee and an amazing executive committee. Um, and so we were hearing from them as well, too, like, hey, our members need to hear. Let's have um, a town hall. So we had the town hall in April. We we're going to have another one in May and another one in June. Just until we, uh, until COVID can, we start seeing some containment with COVID, I think it's gonna be really important just to um, keep our members up to date. So when we went to town hall, the only thing we were providing was a, a high level update on influence. We wanted the rest of the time to be questions from our members. What did they wanna know? Uh, what, did, what are they curious about? And to be clear, Influence is the name of our big annual yeah. conference. Mm -hmm. So a lot of associations have just sort of like, like freaked out. Like, what do we do? And, <laughs> and, and they sort of just like said, okay, we're going to shut down the conference and we're going to go virtual. But they didn't really know what that meant. And, and I've mm -hmm. talked to a lot of my clients and I've participated on a lot of webinars and, and other broadcasts where they just sort of have that, that talking head, you know, as if they were doing a conference. Now it might be because, you know, our membership is professional speakers. We've seen a lot of things, but I think what NSA is doing with our conference is industry leading. I think it's thought leadership mm -hmm. at its best. So could you talk a little bit about sort of what NSA has decided to do and, and how is this possibly a roadmap for other associations who are trying to figure out if they have a conference in the fall or early next year that may or may not be able to happen, how can they get the most out of that for the association and their membership? Sure, so to your point, we're very fortunate that we have professional speakers. Um, <laughs> and when we talk about speakers, it's not just somebody who gives up, gets up and just imparts knowledge and walks away, right? There is an art to speaking. There's, there's you know, a public speaker and a professional speaker. And our speakers are content experts that share their knowledge. So I have, a whole resource of people that I can go to and say, hey, we've been talking for the last couple of years about how conferences need to change. COVID mm -hmm. has happened. Our conference is not going to be what we originally planned. How can we, um, you know, never waste a good crisis. How can we use this to move influence and think about it and reimagine it and do it in such a way that makes it a more engaging um, event and becomes a roadmap for the future? Um, so we went through all of the, the typical options, like do we just do virtual only, do we do a hybrid, do we just put our heads down and move forward as is, and obviously that last one wasn't going to be um, an option. We also were fortunate that we have a really good partner in the Gaylord um, National Harbor. They've been working with us, they were our first call like March, March 2nd, we're on the phone with them talking about, okay, what could this look like, what could we do, and they've been um, really open to all of our suggestions. So working with the influence co-chairs, working with the executive committee um, and working with some other volunteers, we decided we, um, we are moving forward with a hybrid experience for influence. Because I talked earlier about our um, 
the speaking profession is a lonely profession, community is very, very important for our members. Mm -hmm. so part of, of decision making is looking at what do your members want and what do your members need. And we've got a huge portion of our members that are saying, whatever you can do to get us together personally, please do. So provided it is safe, we're going to hold an in-person event. But what we're doing is influence starts now. So next week, we're starting the virtual portion of influence where we're having two virtual sessions each week, one on Monday, one on Thursday. Um, and that will culminate in a three-day live event, hopefully in person. But if it's not safe to come together in person, we will come together virtually. Mm -hmm. um, one of the keys to holding an event, as I think any event, but especially a virtual event, is how do you intertwine all of the topics so it's not just like watching a bunch of videos or watching a bunch of talks. Right. So that was a piece for us that we spent a few weeks really thinking through. And we have you two coming in to moderate that entire event um, right. and come up with different formats so that no, uh, there will not be back to back the same format. Right. One might be an interview, one might use Zoom meetings and do breakouts. So the other um, learning experience for this for our members is how do you conduct successful virtual meetings? So it's not just a talking head and just being lectured at, right? So um, there's just so many dynamics and dimensions to it, but the goal is to have this be ex experiential learning where you're immersed in the influence experience. So one of the things that I was really impressed, I mean, when you came to us and said, would we help with the, the three months of, of, you know, twice a week webinar type broadcast that we're going to do is that where you got those people is you looked at the influence live four day event mm -hmm. and you looked at the breakout speakers mm -hmm. and you realized that if we're able to in August to go live, not everybody who would normally come would come. So we're going to have a smaller event. So you took the breakouts out of that live event and moved them to this twice a week format moving forward for three months. I kind of thought that was genius because yeah. you have the people who were there to teach mm -hmm. doing these like deep dive breakouts and now they can do it in a format where they can, the, the members can get it now. Mm -hmm. How did you decide to take a three months? I haven't seen another group say, we're going to make our conference three months long. So this is, why <laughs> right? I think, so this is why I think it's kind of cutting edge. Where did that idea come from? And, and you guys had to be a little brave to say, let's do it. So, you know, going forward, we're probably going to do 30 days before an event, but what we realized is our members need this information now. They can't afford to wait until July or, or, or August for the information, right? Because we're talking about um, how do you pivot your business? How do you do online events? How do you um, build a successful speaking business? Um, and how do you recession-proof your business? So those are all really important topics right now. So that's by pulling it forward now. Um, none, of, none of these decisions were made in a vacuum. Uh, mm -hmm. Lots of import, in, input from board members, from um, advisors. Uh, Stephen Shapiro wrote an article and did some research on events. And one of the things we talked about was for the in-person event, let's keep that with things that are only doable in person or are much better in person. If somebody's just going to get up and lecture or talk at an audience, that can be very valuable, but you don't need to be in person for that. That could be virtual. That could be a video ahead of time. And he's doing some really innovative things in um, the conference arena. What I find fascinating, and Tom and I have been on production calls for those virtual sessions that'll start yeah. next Monday. What I think is really interesting is the challenge that you've thrown down for the people who are presenting to give evergreen content, content mm -hmm. that's going to be valuable because this is all going to be archived for future use, which I think is another beautiful way to continue to have value in this period of time, but also make it relevant for right now. Mm -hmm. So that's a really interesting challenge. I think we're all up for it. Don't, don't get me wrong. But it does actually take some preparation to make sure that that's going to happen in each and every episode. What kind of behind the scenes action 
is NSA doing to make sure that this actually comes off really, really well? Sure. So um, there are, again, a lot of moving parts to this. Um, one of the things that associations face that is unique to associations uh, versus like other companies is we have so many stakeholders. Mm-hmm. So, um, things that might take an individual, they could make a decision and execute it the next day. We often have to talk to three or four different groups of people before we can really begin that execution um, mm-hmm. of it. Uh, so lots of conversations, lots of Zoom meetings. I mean, that's pretty much my life right now from morning till night is <laughs> on Zoom calls with people. Um, then uh, we've got our team working really closely with the speakers. Uh, mm-hmm. we scheduled regular production calls. So nobody is going to go on platform. And this is something that we're going to do going uh, forward is nobody's going to go on any platform, whether it's virtual or uh, on a stage, without a production call to really walk through what are your top three um, takeaways uh, that for, for the attendees. How are you planning on doing this? How could we do this maybe a little bit differently? Mm-hmm. How can we encourage interaction? And just facilitating those conversations. Again, we're really lucky we have professional speakers. Right. Um, and this is their job. This is what they do. And they often come with ideas. And so our job mm-hmm. is to support and how do we fulfill that? Because we want to make every speaker successful. Well, I know I, I often speak for Tom and, and he <laughs> allows me to do so. Whatever she says is what I believe probably. Right. It's true. Uh, we were, I think, ahead of the curve. We've been doing virtual and hybrid events for six years and associations and meeting professionals didn't quite see the value of that virtual MC, hybrid MC role. And when you're paying, you told me yesterday, $200 for a gallon of coffee, having to spend money (laughs) on something that you don't see the value in is not going to happen. (laughs) But I, I think we're both very pleased to be able to bring those six years of experience into NSA's model and be able to actually serve in a way that we didn't expect to, but we're really happy that we get to. Well, and I see that's uh, one of the things that cha- that that starts to change is um, mm-hmm. again in, in this environment that we're in, it's bringing light to some things, right? So Mm -hmm. um, with associations, sometimes change is difficult. It depends (laughs) on how involved your volunteers are and how involved like your board is because your volunteer, your volunteers change every year. And so you're starting Mm -hmm. from scratch like every year um, and educating every year. Right. So like it can be difficult to make changes associations also are very cost conscious. A lot of associations Mm -hmm. do not run at a profit or or surplus, or if they do, it's it's a really small amount. So it's very easy to get into that uh, penny wise, pound foolish mode. (laughs) Um, And that often is the case with speakers. Um, When planning events, it's like, okay, I'm going to pay for a huge celebrity named speaker. This is typical conference model. Um, for at least one day, maybe two days. Um, and then I don't think I'm going to pay for an MC. Our CEO can do it or <laughs> a volunteer can do it. It's not that hard. I would argue that your MC is your most critical role mm. because your MC is the one that reinforces the learning and takes all of these separate presentations and ties them together. So mm-hmm. it feels like an experience. And what attendees want today, especially those younger attendees, they are all about experience. I mean, mm-hmm. look at all of the data, all of the reports, like millennials, where do they spend their money on things that are experiences, vacations, Starbucks, all of that stuff versus more of the baby boomers. Like, um, <laughs> I'm not paying $4 for coffee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for now, I don't need to hear from somebody like I can read it myself. Right. So it's adapting right. to the different learning modalities and there is some budding uh, research. I don't think anything like official yet, but that experiential learning is actually um, stays with you longer. So yeah, I've seen that as well. Yeah, yeah it, mm-hmm. it connects it for you. 
And it's interesting. I read an article that Jay Bear wrote where he talked about the the MC is important, just what you said mm -hmm. at a live event, and it's often overlooked. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's very important to make a live event great. And his argument was in a virtual setting, it just might be more important for all of those reasons that you said. Because an example that a friend of mine gave was he said, imagine if you were watching the Today Show and it was just a bunch of segments without right. any context. If you didn't have, you know, Savannah and Hoda and sometimes Kathy Lee in there giving you sort of the, the context of what right. you're leading up to, what you just saw, it's just a bunch of video clips. Yeah. And we've seen that with the Academy Awards. Eliz and I have talked about this. <laughs> the last two yes. years, they opted for political correct reasons to mm -hmm. not have some comedian be their MC, and they went without an MC, and what they got was a much more boring, it ran on time because things just happened, but it was more boring and their ratings were down. So yeah. the mm -hmm. broadcast model of having someone host your show, I think you're right, it's really important. Agreed, and um, <laughs> the, other, the other thing that does come into play is like what came into play with Academy Awards, it's all about risk mitigation and risk reduction, right? Nice. Um, <laughs> but it's not a balance because to have something great, you, there is always some level of risk associated with mm -hmm. it. Um, and part of it is just level setting and um, framing it for the attendees and for the audiences. So Mary Lou, you've made some decisions for your live event for this year that are massive. Uh, we're doing away with the what's called the Cabin Institute, which is our sort of entry-level speaker learning day. And we've done away with the youth program that for many families of NSA members is the highlight of that influence experience. And there's really good reasons why that's done, but there's got to be risk from your standpoint as the staff and the organizing committee and everything else to announce we can't do it the way we've done it before. If we're fortunate enough to be able to have a live event, it's going to be a day shorter. These ancillary things aren't happening and we just have to get through it. How has that been received? Um, overall, um, overall, it's been received pretty well. I think uh, it's about being transparent and talking through the decisions with people, which we did in the town hall. Um, mm -hmm. The point I made in the town hall is because our audience has a lot of, like comes from a lot of different backgrounds. I've got people on extremes, people telling me whatever you do, to hold that live event, you hold that live event. Right. I will be there. And if you don't hold it, I will hold it. <laughs> and then other people saying, oh my God, you are so unethical. How have you not canceled influence yet? You're going to put me in danger. So I've got those both extremes. So no matter what decision we make, we are not going to make everybody happy. So we've got to look at what is in the best interest of our membership and of the industry. Um, and we have to just we have to make those decisions respectfully listen to the to the other viewpoints um, and, and try and understand where they're coming from. But at some point, we've got to turn down the no noise and focus on how do we move forward? Because trying to make everybody happy is how you end up with mud. It's just like when you want to paint, if you get everybody's input, no, it should be red, it should be purple, it should be green, it should be yellow. Combine it all, you end up with brown. And uh, that's yeah. all the time things are overly compromised to the point that they're watered down. So it's always starting with what is the goal? What is the intent? And making sure that everything lines up to that and are we achieving this goal? And the goal for influence is to lead the speaking profession, to be the conference and event for speaking professionals and um, provide professional development for working professional speakers. So if we representing speakers are trying to help lead the event and meeting industry back online and really espouse the importance of events for us to cancel an event three or four months out right. because we're uncertain, that is not walking. That makes a lot of sense. Lot and of sense. having been on some of these calls where you know, there, there were painful decisions that needed to be made. One of the things that I have appreciated over and over again is the focus on what the members need right now and in the future. And the ability to look at what's happening right now, yes, there are some bad things happening, but it is an opportunity to really reinvent what happens 
at that conference. And maybe it isn't three days, it's a month. It's, well, this year it's three months. <laughs> I, I appreciate that innovation. And when you're talking about leading the, the profession, that's exactly what needs to be done. Yeah, and we have to try some things, right? And so if we don't fail at anything, we're not trying hard enough. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and I think it's, it's, you, you got to be brave to try new things, but mm -hmm. it's the only way that, that sort of greatness can happen is if you, you throw away the mold. So mm -hmm. before we kind of wrap up here, what advice do you have for the, the association industry, if you will, mm -hmm. and, and the subset of, of the meetings industry? Because there's a lot. I talk to people every day. There's a lot of people out there who don't know what to do. Right. Yeah. I would say the first thing is to try not to make decisions based out of fear. Um, and that's very hard when you turn on any sort of news, whether it's through your social channel, it's through your TV, it's through the internet, whatever. Like it, right. our news is now entertainment. It's not news and it is completely fear-based. Um, yes. And so make sure that you're in a calm place and um, reduce those feelings of anxiety when you're trying to make a decision. Think through um, what do your members need now and what do your members need in the future? There might be some things that you might do now that is just short term because your members need it right now, but plan it to be short term. Like these um, Wednesday weekly virtual live interviews and the Fresh Talk Fridays that we're doing for our members, that is short term. That's mm -hmm. to help through the COVID crisis. Looking at influence, we know we need to change things this year. What can we put in place this year that is a sustainable change for future years? Right. Um, talk to your members talk to your industry partners, your, um, the hotel, the AV company. Um, they're all working with multiple other associations, right? And talk to other association leaders. What works for one association may not work for another. It depends on your members and your membership base. That is fantastic advice. Uh, as always, our time goes so fast. <laughs> I really appreciate you um, spending time with us today because I know for the rest of the day, you're going to be on Zoom call after Zoom call after Zoom call. So thank you for spending your day with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, and thank you very much for all that advice because I know that I have five or six clients in the association world who I'm going to share this interview with because mm -hmm. I think that you shared things that will help people put things into perspective. So thanks for your Absolutely. transparency. Well, thank you. And thank you guys for all you do for NSA and for what you're doing for the uh, industry right now. It's sorely needed. Well, we would like to do what we do for a lot more people. <laughs> so if you're interested in having a talk show format for your virtual event, or as we go back to live events, a, a hybrid piece of your event, Tom and I would just love to talk to you. You could find us at webinartalkshow.com. And if you're like what you're seeing, like us at on Facebook at Webinar Talk Show. And the, the other thing is, is that uh, we're going to keep doing these interviews on the mm -hmm. Webinar Talk Show. We've been doing them every day to get started. We are now going to go to twice a week at 11 o'clock Central, Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, we will be live streaming those on the Facebook page, so make sure you get that. You can also go back in the archives and watch the nine previous interviews we did before right. we had Mary Lou. They're all awesome, just like this one was. Indeed. We look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great weekend. See you soon. Thanks, y'all.